Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. So today we are gonna talk about emergency home backup power. Stick around. So if you're like us and you live in a rural setting, you know that one of the major downsides to this type of lifestyle is utilities. Usually if the power goes out, it's not just a five or 10 minute thing, it's usually at least a couple hours and sometimes it can even be days. Uh, the setup that we have here, we could be almost entirely off grid if we chose to be. We have a well, we have a septic, we have a backup generator, and we have a wood stove for heat and the ability to cook. So what I wanted to talk about today was the emergency backup system that we had installed at our place. Now there's three different options you can go with uh, when installing a backup power system. The first one would be just to go out and buy a generator and run extension cords in through your windows. That's not ideal. Usually a backup home generator is gonna have two or four outlet ports that you can plug extension cords into and run them into your house. To me, that's just extremely limiting. You know, the things that you need on backup power, are things like, you know, your well pump, uh, your refrigerators, your freezers, things like that. And I just think that there's more, more things that you need to have plugged in in the event of emergency than what uh, extension cords and a generator give you. Now, the second option is what we did, which was install a transfer switch, which allows you to hardwire your generator into the circuits that you already have established in your house. So really there shouldn't be any disruption uh, to your electrical service if you go that route. The third and final option is to have an on-demand backup generator. Now these are expensive. They're in the neighborhood of 10 to $15,000. And you do get what you pay for though. It's, it's a much nicer system than going with the uh, transfer switch option because it's all hands-free. If the power goes out, it turns on by itself. Usually you can plumb these into the natural gas that comes into your house. So you have an un unlimited supply of fuel for the generator and you don't have to screw around with gas cans and filling it up and making sure it's not running out. The other nice thing about these on-demand systems is they usually will kick on uh, once every 30 days and test themselves to make sure they're working. This also keeps you know any internal components of the motor uh, of the generator from seizing up or anything like that. That is not the option that we went with just because we were on a budget and we wanted to be able to afford our backup emergency power right now. So we had it in the case of an emergency as soon as possible. So what I wanna do now is take you up to the house and show you the emergency backup power system we had installed. All right, so that's all there is to hooking up your portable generator and hardwiring it directly into the circuitry of your house. Um, what you will need is you'll need a generator extension cord. This is a 30 amp cord. These are kind of pricey. You can spend anywhere from 50 to 100 bucks on one of these extension cords, um, but you need something that big because this generator is a 10,000 watt. It's made for backup home power. Uh, you can get smaller 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 watt generators uh, but those are more for camping or cabins or something like that. This one is designed specifically for backup home power. Now, as you can see there, there is a battery on this, so it does have electric start. It's actually a dual fuel as well, so you can put gasoline or propane in here. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna fire it up and then we'll go down in the basement and show you how all of this works. All right, so we're down in the basement now. We've got the generator running outside. This is the main breaker box for all the circuitry in the house. This is the transfer switch panel. What I'm gonna do now is simulate a blackout by turning, killing the main breaker on this panel box. We'll flip the transfer switch and it should provide backup power. After we do that, I will go ahead and explain to you how all of this works. Okay, so now we are simulating a power outage. I'm gonna go ahead and flip this transfer switch now. Okay, so I heard a beep, that means that we've got something on. I'm gonna go ahead and show you the certain things that we have that we have on backup power. 
All right, so the first thing we have on backup power is our chest freezer. So if you see that little power light on down there, and then there you go. That is all of our frozen goods that are not going to go bad in the event of a power outage. All right, so that is our boiler system that we have here. And even though our boiler is powered by gas, it still requires electricity to uh, power the water through the radiators. So I don't know if you can see in there, there's a little green light that keeps popping on. So we have power to our boiler. The next thing is, is our hot water tank here. So I'm gonna turn my flashlight back on. So our hot water tank, we just have plugged directly into an outlet there with a surge protector. You can see that surge protector light is on. So right now we've got a freezer, we've got our hot water tank, and we've got our boiler. Another thing we have on our backup power grid is our wood stove. Now, obviously the wood is providing the heat, but because this is a fireplace insert, we do have a blower here. So I'll go ahead and turn this up. So on backup power, we still have our blower to kick the heat out into the room. So since the power is out, we have to prioritize what's important. Right now, a light in the bathroom is not, but our well pump is. So we still have running water but we have no light in the bathroom. And last but not least, one of the more important things is your fridge. If the power goes out and your fridge isn't working, you're gonna have food spoiling within 24 hours. Now that we've seen that this system does work, let's talk about how it works, and then we'll cover how much a system like this costs to install versus those 10 or $15,000 on-demand backup home power systems. Under normal circumstances without a backup power system, you have your power that feeds in from the grid, hits your meter box, and then it comes down to your main breaker, and then it gets dispersed throughout the circuits of your home. But when you install a transfer switch and a sub panel, you need to identify those essential circuits, and you're actually gonna relocate those from your main switch over to your sub panel for your transfer switch. So now that you have your essential circuits separated out onto a sub panel, when the power comes in, it's going to feed just like it did before, your main breaker, it's gonna power the non-essential circuits, and then that power is going to continue to flow through from your main panel to your essential sub panel and then your essential circuits are going to be powered as well so that is how it's going to work when you don't have a power outage but you have your backup power system hooked up so now let's talk about what happens when the power is out so when the power is out your power feeds from the generator to that external port on the outside of the house from there it feeds your essential panel with your transfer switch and then that's going to power the essential circuits of the house now, when you flip that transfer switch, what's gonna happen is that's gonna prevent you from backfeeding your main breaker, which is gonna prevent you from backfeeding the grid. And the reason you don't want to backfeed the grid is because if the power is out, there's probably line workers out there trying to restore power, and they're not gonna be expecting there to be a backfeed of power from homeowner generators. So it's important to note that when you're getting your power from the grid, both your non-essential and your essential panel boxes are gonna be wired. But when you're getting your power from your generator, only your essential panel box is going to be wired. Your non-essential is going to have no power. So that is my very rudimentary understanding of how the transfer switch and transfer panel works for backup generators. This is definitely not a DIY project. This is something you want to hire a professional certified electrician to install. Speaking of that, let's talk about the cost. I mentioned before that a full-fledged on-demand system is in the neighborhood of ten dollars to $12,000. The cost of this the transfer panel itself is about $300. Uh, I paid $800 for that 10,000 watt generator and I got a friends and family discount because I know an electrician who installed this for me and he charged me 300 bucks to install it. So my all-in cost for this was about $1,400 compared to $10,000 to $15,000 for an on-demand system. Now with this system here, there is going to be a little bit more involved in what you have to do to make it work. So one, you've got to keep it fueled up with gas. The gas capacity of that generator is about 6.6 .6 gallons, and it's rated to run for about 15 to 18 hours at 50% capacity. So that means at least once a day, I'm gonna be going out there to refuel it with gas. And honestly, if you're running backup power, you're probably not gonna be running that generator 24 seven. You're gonna be going out there, turning it on for an hour or two to make sure the freezers stay cold, the refrigerator stays cold. If you need to take a shower or something, running the well water but it's probably not gonna be something you're gonna be running 24 seven. So you're gonna have a lot of in and out turning the generator on and off. Now they do make some nicer units that have a remote start on them so you can start and stop them from inside the house. That'd be something that would be really nice. Another thing, like I said earlier, those on-demand generators, they will actually test themselves once a month every 30 days or something like that. So they start and stop and like I said, keep everything from freezing up and seizing up. 
but on these generators you do need to go out and probably run them for 10 or 15 minutes once a month to do the same thing but it's going to be more manual you have to do that yourself i think those are some fair trade-offs to save somewhere in the ballpark of nine to fourteen thousand dollars let me know in the comments below which one you guys would go with or if you have a backup home system set up let me know what you've got anyway i hope you enjoyed this video if you did click that subscribe button check out some other videos and thanks for watching